Before we start this video, I want to remind you all that I will show some symbolism like swastikas and some hammers and sickles that might be hurtful to certain groups and certain minorities. So if you don't like that, I would prefer that you skip this video and don't watch this video completely. I don't want you to get hurt. I'm showing this all because I'm a collector and war history enthusiast and I want to share my collection with everyone and I want to share and preserve history. Um, the items that I show in my collection are not my personal political opinion, so I don't uh, associate with Nazism or with communism or with whatever extremist ideologies, so I hope you guys uh, remember that. Either way, that being said, I hope you guys enjoy watching this video and till next time. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. We are gonna start off this YouTube channel with a collection tour. Y'all have been asking on my TikTok channel for quite a while now, when are you gonna do the collection tour? When is there gonna be a room tour? Well, it's not really gonna be a room tour, but it is gonna be a collection tour and everything that is inside my collection room. So yeah, I would say enjoy watching the collection tour and let's get started. So first of all, we're going to start with showing my impression behind me that is also containing some original items from the Second World War. My guy Rupert over here. Rupert is dressed up in a complete Absentam Muster reproduction uniform from Panther Shop. Um, as you can see, he has some nice Coco Momo pouches. He has Y straps, which actually are having original metal pieces to them. So every, every metal bit on the Y straps is actually original. Uh, Rupert is also wearing a uh, still working beautiful Damon flashlight from the Second World War. And Rupert is also wearing, and I'm going to show you guys up close, a beautiful original refurbished Stahlhelm from the Second World War. I did it myself, I refurbished this helmet myself. Uh, it's the first refurbishment project that I ever did. As for currently, there are three refurbishment projects still on the way. I'm going to show the helmets who I'm going to refurbish soon. Um, but yeah, this is my first refurbishment I ever did and I'm very happy with it, how it ended up looking. So that's the helmet of Rupert. I'm gonna put it back. Good, so when we turn around Rupert, we come across the first original items uh, from its equipment. First of all, I have this beautiful original World War II bayonet with wooden grip, which is pretty beautiful. It slides in there very nice. And I also have this nice shovel that is mounted on Rupert, which is also obviously an original one. When we turn around Rupert some more, we come past the rest of his equipment. First of all, an original gas mask with gas mask, gas mask inside there. So a complete gas mask with filter. Sadly, the gas plane is not on there. I'm working on getting a gas plane. I actually have few gas planes originals laying in my uh, collection but I still have to restore them I still have to put some buttons on there so it's coming I'm getting a gas plane pouch soon an original Koch cashier and an original completely original uh, field bottle some other items that are standing next to me and on and around my desk are for example currently this beautiful original uh, Vietnam War uh, shovel from the USA. Pretty happy with it, nice cover. I also have down here two of these post-war field telephones. Down here I also have an original World War II era British telephone. Next to Rupert on the ground I have a very big artillery shell casing from brass from the Brits from the Second World War, which is pretty cool. And then I'm gonna take you up here. So next to Rupert on this little shelf, let us say, uh, I have the following. So over here I have one of my metal detection finds, which is a piece of a shaman track. And I also have over here, as you can see, some flare gun patrone from uh, post-war and also during the war. This one is from during the war. 
uh, from the Germans, which is pretty cool. Over here, I have my one of my prides of my collection, this beautiful looking, beautiful condition, and still working, by the way, flare gun. Um, it's pretty interesting how well it still works. I can open it, I can reload it, I can close it, and yeah, of course, it can still fire. Sadly, I don't have some full flare flares to shoot with it, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a Leuchtpistole 34 from uh, the second war. So that's pretty cool, amazing condition. So that's laying right over here. Here, right in the back, I have a scrappy shovel cover with a original Wu-Wu-2 uh, field shovel from the Americans from 1944 it was made. Um, so yeah, it's a scrappy cover from the second boot wall over it, but it's a nice shovel inside, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna put it right back there. I have over here two helmets, so I have this one, which is under here, an M42 helmet that I'm gonna restore in the future. It's a size 66 that I bought at Militrax. So I'm going to restore this one very soon into a nice no decal um, reissue M42. And then I have over here my little project helmet, which was one of my first proper looking refurbished uh, Stahlhelms that I bought. I bought this one at a military market in Wavig in Belgium uh, for my 18th birthday. And yeah, this is a little bit of a project helmet of mine. I tried some uh, things like winter camouflage on there. And now I try chicken wire on there. Sadly, TikTok removed my video how I did chicken wire on this helmet because I they made an entire explanation video about it. But they removed it because apparently that's hate speech, making some uh, chicken wire on your helmet. So, but now you can see the nice end result of my chicken wire. It's not gonna stay on there, by the way. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one in the, in the future. Maybe I will sell it in the future. Who knows? Either way, I'm gonna put it back. Then I have the cap that is on the hat, which is an Elsenau M40 Overseas SS cap um, that I use for my impression, of course. It's made out of original material from the Second World War, which made it rather expensive, but it's a beautiful cap. I love it. Right on my foam head. Um, it's looking very, very sexy. Oh, what? Underneath this all, I have a beautiful original World War II Zeldbahn from the Germans from the Second World War. So, very cool one. What's beautiful about this one, I don't know whether you can see it, but it has misprints on it. Every piece of fabric of the Zeldbahn has misprints. So, every, um, every time they change the fabric or had to apply a new piece of fabric somewhere, there is a misprint. It also every piece of fabric also has a different color, so it's a special uh, Zeldbahn with quite a few unique uh, features to it that are very common in uh, late war items from the Second Boot War from the Germans uh, that show how quick and how unproper the Germans had to manufacture stuff in order to keep up with the war. So yeah, it's a beautiful original Zeldbahn from the Second Boot War that is laying over here on a beautiful original World War II, I don't know whether you can see it, um, box, wooden box. The wooden box says on the top, oben nicht werfen. And that means top side, don't throw. Don't throw with it. That's the upper side and don't throw with the box. So that's what it says. These boxes were very common. They. Um, were meant to be reused, so they would send the, the boxes filled with ammo or with fuses to the front, and then they would empty the boxes at the front, and then they would bring the boxes back to Germany to be refilled, and so on, and so on. So this box has seen quite a lot. Um, it has some clear usage damage, but it's in a very good condition. I'm very happy uh, with how it looks. It also has the original, uh, the original livery uh, stamps and, 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 and whatever on there. So I'm very happy with it, very cool. It even has a little Waffenamt down here. It has a little Waffenamt. Uh, I'm gonna show you a close up of that. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, very good condition. So 
Yeah, very nice. Then behind here I have this Soviet cap. I don't know whether it's an original, but yeah, well, it's a Soviet cap. And then all the way behind here, I have this beautiful Flak 88 shell casing, a beautiful Waffen amt on there, and in a beautiful condition as well, that holds my Soviet cap. Um, also, another shell casing that I have over here is this, it was, it was actually one of my first uh, war finds that I ever did. This is a 37 millimeter French light cannon, uh, the 1885 cannon or something, uh, that was used during the First World War, but also during the beginning days of the Second World War, and was found on the, big, on the opening days of the Second World War battlefield. So that's pretty cool. I'm very happy with it. I always keep it on my desk, so that's nice. What I also have laying over here, I almost forgot, is a little Tito party pin. I don't know whether you can see it, but it's a party pin of an original party pin that I bought in Bosnia uh, from the Communist Party of Tito, which was the dictator of Yugoslavia back before the Yugoslavian wars of the 90s and 80s. So that's pretty cool. What I also have standing over here is a beautiful original fire hunt working, working condition. Uh, kerosene lamp from the Second World War. It was left behind by the Germans over here in my village and I own it now. It's a beautiful like field grey colour as well. Pretty cool, love it. I actually have to uh, use it more for my reenactment because that is a nice a nice thing. Together with my uh, little Damon flashlight, it will be pretty cool. Either way, so that is about it for this corner. I'm gonna reassemble everything and then I'm gonna show all the rest. So as you can see, you have my little seat where I always record my videos, right over there. Rupert over there, my little background display over there. Some nice uh, relics from when I was at Militrax. And then up here, you have some more items. This is a big shell casing. And I don't know whether you can see it, but it has some trench art on it, which is pretty cool. Some nice trench art. Some big kerosene lamps also from the war era uh, that I got. This is a nice shell. I made a video about it. I found it in the West Hook. I found it in a World War I battlefield, just laying around, uh, already surf like on the surface. It was pretty cool to see. This is a nice shell from 1944 that I also got for free once. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it up there. And then next to all of that, I have my other pieces of my uniform. So I have my great coat, with under there my nice tunic behind that I'm gonna try to get it off jesus fucking yeah, yeah. behind that okay behind that you have my pants I'm gonna lay my tunic to the side and behind that my nice recently aged camouflage smock and that opens up the view for the rest of the collection let's dive into it Good, so we opened up the first little closet area and right over here you have my storage of shrapnel and some little boxes that I kept from the Chinese food restaurant to put some more other stuff like Roman coins and stuff away nice and safely. And I don't know whether you see, but right here in the front, you might be wondering what it is, right? Well, this is a 18 pounder British shrapnel shell in its complete order. So you have the shell, Obvious, obviously empty, not dangerous anymore. You have the disc, you have like the pipe that transfers the explosive from the head to the back. You have the lead balls that shoot out from the front of the shell midair that will come raining down. And you have the middle piece and of course the nice timer fuse, as you can see, that we also found at the location where we found maybe 20 or 30 of these shrapnel shells. So that was pretty interesting. Then we go one story lower, and then we have over here my Danix reproduction 1911. Over here we have a nice brand gun magazine with a lot of 303 British shell casings. So over here we have some original wartime blank cartridges from uh, FN Herstal, uh, which is pretty cool. They're still completely packaged. 
uh, and here we have some 303 wooden wooden uh, cartridges like wooden tip cartridges for the Lee Enfield 303 or the Brennan gun uh, for practice over here we have a nice unissued bandage thing package from the second world war 1943 as you can see which is pretty cool and down here we have a nice little can that I found at the uh, second-hand store uh, that displays liberation from the Brits and this beautiful col uh, collection of Winston Churchill's story during the Second World War, the complete edition. So that's pretty cool. Let's now skip over to the next closet. Okay, good. So on the top shelf we have what I already showed many times before, what I found in the Ardennes one out of the two beautiful nice looking original american gas mask uh, the lenses are in here but they sadly fell out when they dried so i kept keep them separately some plain piece of some sort that i also have in here which is pretty cool some american world war ii rations are also in here uh, just chilling uh, over here you have some pieces of a backpack other pieces are like the more rusty pieces are in there but you have some pieces of backpacks and some uh, some equipment from the Americans in rather nice condition I don't know whether you can see it still has the original paint so that's pretty cool you have these M1 Garand ammunition pouch uh, buckle you have this very much deteriorated uh, US knife for for eating that of course a pincer button right over there wait i'm gonna show you pincer button right here some more pincer buttons from the americans pretty nice condition so yeah there is quite a lot to be seen here this original uh batch from the current airborne division that i found in saint mary uh in normandy actually a few days after the memorial service of d-day um and that's very cool. So one of the soldiers uh, lost it over there. It even has some uh, use and wear and tear damage. So one of the soldiers lost it over there uh, at the memorial site of the landings of the uh, 82nd Airborne Division in saint mary So that's pretty cool. I found it over there. And I put it back. And over here, in here, is an American, an original bracelet from American soldier. I can't show the name, sadly. But an original bracelet for American soldier that I found in the Ardennes and this is the chain that was still on there so yeah that's one of my prized possessions and I keep it nice and safe in here here in the back we have a shell casing with a flag that I got in my hamburger at Utah Beach yeah I'm that kind of guy I keep I keep everything um, some coins from Belgium and from France, uh, some medals from Belgium, a nice cap from the Belgian army from the 50s or 60s, and this service, um, this Belgian service booklet, uh, Belgian army service booklet, that um, shows that it's about from a Belgian soldier that lived through World War I. So as you can see, 1913, and then suddenly it stops, 1914, and then it continues in 1920. So this guy fought for the Belgian army. This is this original book from uh, its payment book, basically. This guy who owned this, who had this book, fought in the Belgian army uh, during the second, during the first world war and survived. So that's pretty cool. I have his little book. Of course, like the the the, the cover around it is not real, but doesn't matter. This is the remains of a shovel american uh, field shovel uh, cover that i found also in the ardennes in this condition together with of course the other side uh, that's that's pretty cool in here i have some 30 out of 6 shell like shells like bullets uh, which is also pretty cool and in here i also have laying some kind of big shell i don't know and then some more books from the Second World War. Um, 
and some more rations that looked pretty nice to put in the frame so I put them over there but I don't have really a place to store them so I put them that, that over there so that's all of that for this place of the collection now let's get that way before I go to the other side this is my Russian post-war reissue SSH 40 helmet uh, that was refitted with another lineup so that's pretty cool here we are as you can see my desk is over there it's very uh, much littered with all kinds of stuff. My desk is over there and here is my other part of my collection. Let's dive into it. So first of all we're gonna check what's up here. So over here I have some a tail of a 8 cm mortar grenade from the Germans and this beautiful FLAC 20 cm FLAC 38 uh, magazine that I found in my village literally like in the uh, little river that runs through my village. That's where I found it. Of course, as you can see, it loses quite a lot of dust, but I can't keep up with it. But I want to have it in my collection, but now it's over here. It's pretty cool. I can't say like it isn't. So I don't know what this is. I found it as an air base from the uh, Germans, and this as well, some kind of, I don't know, opening mechanism, lever mechanism. I have no clue. If we slide to this side, I have over here this beautiful French Adrian helmet from the Second World War. Uh, with a nice little uh, with a nice little flower over there. In the back I have this original Wood Wood 2 Tornister. I don't really know where to place it but it's an original one. I have to maybe put it over there but I don't know. So yeah it's now standing over there. Here I have an origin two original shells uh, an M35 and an M16 that I recently bought at the flea market. I want to restore them, they're both my size. Uh, this one is a very rare one, it's made by a rare manufacturer, Thiel und Schöne, uh, in Germany. So it's pretty cool, might make it a reissue, uh, World War II reissue helmet, or maybe I'm just gonna keep a World War I helmet, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. This is at least is gonna become a double decal Apfelgrün helmet, uh, if I find the time to restore the tree of these. So I still have to find the time and the effort to restore them all, but I'm gonna do it. Don't worry. I'm gonna restore them. Talking about helmets, right over here, I have the rest of my Stahlhelm collection. It starts all the way down here with my uh, ground found, also in my village by the way. Uh, by the way, that's all coming from that helmet. It's fucking disgusting. That's the liner that used to be in there, proving that's a World War II. Uh, helmet because it's a World War II liner. Um, that is an M16 reissue for World War II that I found in my village. Uh, up here it's a, also you see all the crusty coming over there, also a ground find but I didn't find it myself. It was one of my first Stahlhelms that I ever had. Uh, it's an M16 or it used to be an M16, uh, clearly struck by some grenade or something. Um, from the first World War that was found in the same pit has been this beautiful M18 with a bullet hole true on true in there. It's a pretty cool helmet. Both of them are from the first World War. I don't know, the previous owner painted it some goldish color, but yeah, well, I have it. Then we go up the ladder, and this is a helmet that I bought in Crete. It used to be this nice camo on the dead, this nice sand camo, but some dude decided to also paint over it. I don't know why, but it's a beautiful double decal M35 helmet, or used to be at least. The decal is right under there, as you can see. So it's a rare, rare helmet because it's a size 68, which is a very, very big size. I don't know whether you can see, but that is a si small size uh, 62, 68. Look at the difference. 62, 68. It's a huge difference. What a big head do you have to have? To have a 68. I have already a big head and I only have a 66 size of helmet. So what the fuck is going on? Moving up here, I have this beautiful, as I said, size 62 M40 helmet with the remains of a single decal, a hair decal over here. This, both of these, by the way, were found in the barn next to my house. They were left behind by the Wehrmacht. Uh, they were permanently stationed over here. And then I had to flee for the second armor division from the Americas. So yeah. It still has a lot of paint on there, uh, also on the inside. It has some original Feldgrau paint, but not as much as this beautiful, also size 62 um, M42 helmet, which has quite a lot of 
original paint also on the inside. Sadly, it has no decal, which is mostly the case with M42s. So that means that this one was made in 1943 or after. So yeah, that's my M42. Uh, a beautiful texture paint, Feldgrau, uh, still having quite a lot of its original paint. Now let's switch over to the other side. Boop, there we go. So in here, we start with this original, also left behind by the Germans in the farm next to me. Feldgrau painted Knepgat, that still works from the Second World War, which is pretty cool. And then also found in my village in the ground, an original, or what remains of it, Schnurrschuhe from the Second World War from the Germans. This one was cut open by a bayonet because on the side over here, I don't know whether you see it yet yeah, there, right over here, there is an entrance hole of some shrapnel. So it was like laying around a place where it was full of remains of bombs and shrapnel. Uh, and the person who was wearing this Schnurrschuhe got shrapnel in his foot. And so they cut open, you can see it on the laces, but the, the laces are now decayed sadly. But you, you used to be able to see it on the laces still in there. It was cut open by a sharp object. Uh, probably a bayonet, so that's pretty cool, but very sad but because probably the person who got wounded um, on his foot lost his toes. So uh, a little bit double, but it's still a cool find to find. Then we go down here, we have some evil moustache man post stamps. Uh, we have some felt, an original felt post um, box and within there some uh, photographs and within there as well some Nordgeld from uh, before First World War, during the First World War and the Interbellum period. Which is pretty cool of course, I'm gonna put it back over there. Also I have over here a nice little current post stamp with Edelweiss on there from Switzerland. Because I love Switzerland. Uh, a nice old card pack and some nice original sh pieces of a plane from German planes. As you can see it has some camouflage still on there. Uh, this is also a plane part from a German plane. I don't know which plane yet, but it is from a German plane. Uh, I found it at a German airfield that was completely bombed in a big crater. So it's from a German plane. Pretty cool. Sadly, the bomb I also took with me, of course, exploded like the back of the bomb, but that's standing in the shed. All the way in the back of the garden. So all the way over there. There is also some items over there. In my, in my collection, right in the back, but I already made a video about that in my TikTok channel. So I'm not gonna do that again. Here I have some piles of some French, uh, as you can see, French wartime money. Wait a second, I'm gonna show you. Some French wartime money. No, that's not wartime. This one is Etat Francais, which is the puppet state of France. They made some aluminum coins because yeah, they could not they could not make them out of brass and copper anymore. Next to that pile I have some Spanish World War II coins on a pile. I don't know whether I can show it to you guys. But it's pretty cool. Very nice looking. Next to that I have some Fennig, some Fennix from the World War I period and before Reichspanik in very, very good condition. Some Russian coins over here that I got recently, also from the war period. Oh, I dropped it, fuck. There we go, good. And then some nice World War II German coins. I'm gonna show you one of them, of course, with the eagle on there and Paul von Hindenburg. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So then we go one story lower. This is a tile that was broken out of the house of a collaborator in Belgium. Uh, he tiled this floor. He was a collaborator and he tiled this floor all with this kind of swastikas all around his, uh, all around his room in his, uh, in his house. And I have one of his tiles. So it's an actual tile. It has some the remains of cement on the back. <laughs> so yeah, uh, pretty weird. I bought it in an antique store that deals in tiles and, and hinges and stuff. 
and yeah, that's an original tile of that house. Over here, I have two original uh, packets with uh, some nice uh, dust goggles from the Second World War in there, from the Germans. Right over here, I have uh, an original World War II era, 1942 it says, uh, mug from the Second World War, also from the Germans. Uh, over here, I have some lenses from the Second World War for your gas mask, a nice razor from the Germans from the Second World War, some nice elements, uh, some medals I have as well over here, an Ost medal right over there, Tag der Arbeit medal, silver by wounded abzeichen over here. This is some kind of plate, might be post-war made, but it's a plate that was that is with the logo of the uh, Vogelsang uh, training camp, like training facility for the Panzerwaffe, Luftwaffe and uh, regular hair, which is very weird. I bought this for like 50 cents at the second-hand stall. Um, it's some kind of thing to be glued or stuck on a door. I don't know. It's very weird. Either way, I have it. It's laying over here. I have, of course, this ring that I showed in the Edelweiss episode. I have to clip my nails, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, some original buttons and a Belgian button over here. Uh, a, a ring from the Weiss traps. It's a piece of a Weiss trap. And then we go one story down, some uh, gun holster, post-war. And then I have recent addition to my collection, a beautiful, nice looking uh, cleaning kit for the car 98. Some German barbed wire that I found. Some kind of, I think it's a, uh, a fuse for a landmine or a S-mino or whatever. A nice little lead ball. Uh, some car 98 bullets and shell casings. A 9mm parabellum uh, shell casing right over here. A nice looking, uh, well nice looking, <laughs> pretty bad condition actually. Um, aluminum clip. And then we go down here we have some books. Uh, and we have what I also found a few years ago. I found this uh, handgun, this flintlock handgun. And I also found a very big musket ball. And of course, before I forget it, I also have to show you my second armor division tank, tanker uniform that I also have as a reenactment impression. It's not as good as my German World War II impression, but it's still pretty fun to wear. I sometimes wear it to events. Um, this is my headpiece. I know people hate it when they see these goggles. It's so fury, whatever. I don't care. It's pretty cool. So yeah, this is my... Um, Jacket, I'm gonna take off the jacket and under there I have my equipment, my gloves in here uh, and all my rest of my equipment is just stuffed underneath here on the hanger. Uh, but yeah, that's my American World War II impression. I also have my shoes somewhere down here, give me a second. So these are my shoes, uh, they're still dirty from uh, Mane. I have to clean them for fuck's sake. Yeah, well, th these are my shoes. And before I forget it, also my winter overpants from the Second World War, or like reproductions, of course, from my American uniform that I also wear when it's very cold outside. Okay, good. That was about everything. I still have some a lot of things in my backyard shed, but I already made a TikTok video about that. So if you want to see what I have in my backyard shed, go check out my TikTok for my backyard shed video. I also have in my closet some more Belgian post-war, not 50s, 60s uniforms. But I didn't really feel like showing these because nobody's really into that. Uh, and neither am I. I just have them because they come from family. Um, yeah, that was about it. This was a very quick tour. Um, but I like... If I'm gonna show everything in detail, it's it's gonna take hours. I think I already made a very long video by showing this, so I want to keep it short and good, rather than long and boring. So, good. Either way, thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this little collection tour of mine, this little room tour. And go subscribe to my YouTube channel. And it, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you also have all subscribed already to my TikTok channel. But if you haven't yet, also do that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. And see you guys in the next YouTube video, I guess.
okay goodbye